Hello and welcome to our year-end update. Naylor's financial years ended on the 29th of February 2024 and this is a roundup of what we've been up to over the last six months or so. The big development, which took place on the 1st of March 2024, is that we've split the group into two. Naylor Drainage, the Cawthorn and Methyl sites, and Naylor Industries, the Woomel and Tipton, Bark Green and Garforth, and Gainsborough sites. At the same time, Naylor Gardenware merged with Welsh terracotta manufacturer Smith & Jennings. We're a 50% shareholder in that combined business, which going forward operates from purpose-built manufacturing and warehousing premises on the Cawthorn site. And while structurally one or two things have changed, important things haven't. The ownership of our businesses remains unchanged and we'll continue to maintain our family business ethos and strive to put our people and their safety first. So what has this year been like for our drainage and industries businesses and what lies ahead? Well, as regards the year just gone, it remained a challenging time to run a business with our businesses most exposed to house building being particularly impacted. Thankfully, demand for infrastructure-oriented products such as cable ducting remain reasonably strong and sales at Cawthorn and Methyl have held up well. We're in the middle of a major investment programme on both sites. We invested 8.7 million last year and we'll invest another 5.5 million this year. The largest area of investment was in the Cawthorn building programme. We spent over 7 million last year on both office accommodation as well as 4,000 square metres of new manufacturing buildings. We also moved across our Wumwell injection moulding business and can now make couplings where we make the pipe. This avoids what was previously a costly internal transport bill. Next year's focus switches to acquiring kit with two large moulders on order, an attenuation crate tool and a new Hegler line. Whilst Cawthorn has received much of the spend, methyl has not been neglected. A new granulator, autocoiler and two new extruders have been commissioned over the last year and a new Hegler line will be arriving later this year. The result of all this investment, plus lots of new product development work, will be the launch of new sewer, crate and duct ranges, which should help us achieve a significant jump in size. We're also hoping that this will be the year when PVC comes good. We've had some manufacturing challenges, but there are still plenty of opportunities here. Whilst generally we've been in forward gear, the notable exception has been our clay business, which never really recovered from the aftershock of dramatic increase in gas prices. We exited the den sleeve open cut business last year, and later this year we'll stop manufacturing Denlock jacking pipes, which feels like the end of an era for Naylor. Bart Green had a poor year with extrusion production problems since resolved, low sales for our White's precast range, and a depressed market demand for eco lintels, which related to the low levels of house building. The demand for concrete fencing was even more badly affected, and we decided to consolidate our concrete administration onto Bart Green site and run Garforth production as a satellite plant. We're now selling a combined concrete lintel and fence post package from Bart Green site and have relocated our security fencing business to Gainsborough. Investment at Bart Green has included the purchase of a new modular office block and construction of a maintenance workshop and laboratory. We're planning construction of a new production facility for our White's precast business in due course and that will also give us room to make retaining walls and agricultural panels. Gainsborough also had a difficult year with Novoform permanent formwork sales impacted again by the house building downturn but our new MD Jason Watkinson has reorganised the site and introduced security fencing and a grass grid activity and we're hoping for a rebound this year. Tipton's investment programme has allowed it to improve its efficiency and expand its offering, and business has held up well despite economic headwinds. And Woolmell has also made progress. Moving injection moulding off the site has allowed us to order three new lines. Meanwhile, ventilation duct sales have held up well, and the recent promotion of dog tunnels at Crofts was a great success. In summary, the last 12 months have been challenging, with key markets for both drainage and industries remaining turbulent and turnover growth being hard to come by. At the same time, our investment in plant and premises across both sides of the business leave us well placed to benefit from the inevitable upswing. Thank you for watching.